We are back once again for more Nepit the Legend. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more. I am going to switch around the sensor so it's only within the first minute because honestly that's the only one that YouTube seems to recognize. I don't want to stifle creativity and fun and funny moments because I want it to be family friendly. We're going to keep this channel as real as I can possibly keep it. Anyways, with all that out of the way, let's get right into the video. Alright, and now we return, I'm pretty sure. That was a good 12 minutes from the first episode, and now to the next one, this one. So, Nepita all of a sudden got serious on us. Very rare to see you. She got, like, like dead serious. She was like, who in the hell are you, actually? And so, now we're sitting here contemplating of whether we deflect the question or we explain it. But I think... MSPA Rear told us exactly, saying, Look, it would be foolish to to brush away Nepita as just some silly little troll who doesn't know any better. She's obviously had some smarts about her, or else she'd be dead a while ago, no doubt. So I think the best possible, ex possible option here is to explain. Because that's what you do with friends. You tell them the f***ing truth. Anyway... You tell Nepita that you don't know what you are, or even who you are. You certainly know better than you did a few volumes ago, but you think you're an anomaly. You've crash landed into someone else's story. Nepita is still watching you carefully, muscles wound tight. She's ready to pounce. On the fire, the meat begins to blacken and burn, but neither of you say anything. There goes dinner. Me and some friends were supposed to play a game. Different from the games we usually play. Even Equus is going to prolay this the heim, and he usually hates games. But then the game didn't work. Oh, right. You know about that game. She blinks at you. I dream sometimes. Dreams? Well, that's pretty normal. Not normal dreams, dummy. At least, I don't think that they are. I suppose that even if they aren't, I wouldn't have anything to compare them to. They are the only sort of dreams I've ever seen. I'm not sure what they are. I see other Nepita sometimes. Sometimes Pounce is there, and sometimes she is dead. And that always makes me very sad. I see my friends too, and other people I don't know, but who I think would be pretty good friends if I got a chance. The bright, hopeful note in Nepita's voice digs deep at the center of you, plucking at your nerves like a cello string. It makes you so impossibly sad that you don't know why. I don't see you though. I don't think you fit in here. Damn. 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 <laughs> Damn. She's. <laughs> Damn. The recluse in the fucking cave told us you don't belong here. Damn. Guess I'll f go fuck myself then. <laughs> Damn. Okay. <laughs> Chill out, Napita. I I didn't I didn't wrong you at all. Shit. I apologize. I didn't mean to make you feel bad. Now, yeah, so what the fuck? <laughs> that was that was out of pocket, Napita. My dreams are are probably silly and don't mean anything. She springs up from the fire and and what? And and K down. It's fire and K down, okay, on Pounce. Burying her hands and face in the thick white fur, you get up and fall after her, because what else do you do? You p should probably give up on this particular round at this point. You've quite thoroughly killed the friendship move with all the existential angst. Why does she live all the way out here anyway? Wouldn't it be better to live closer to all of her amazing friends? At least Equius, even Terezi, who is definitely very weird, has a house. Admittedly, it's in a tree, but it still counts. Oh, I'm... I'm used to when I was a wiggler, or I think I did. A big, lovely house with windows and lots of furniture for, to pounce and scratch. For pounce and scratch. Pounce closes her eyes and purrs. But then, I don't know, something happened. I remember fire and noise and lots of shouting. And then I was on Pounce's back and we were running for a very, very long time. I think it was pretty terrible. My piece's fingers tighten on Pounce's rough. I like it here. You think back to the different Ogla girl in an oversized jacket who lived rough, another who made her living with murder. In fact, you could see Nepita growing into someone like, like Pulpa, sharper, meaner, all of her bright edges sanded off. Her games transformed into a struggle for survival. Even now, sitting bathed in firelight, she looks tired. Every troll you've met carries the same exhaustion between their shoulders, even the high bloods to a certain extent. They are worn to the bone by the sheer weight of history and a future that promises of more of the same. 
Why does one- what does one do in the face of such insurmountable misery? How can you, a simple silent protagonist, even begin to combat something so all-consuming? So monstrous? Napita is waiting for you to trudge through your mandatory self-aggrandizing introspective interlude, so you all- so you do all you've ever claimed to do. You hold out a hand and wait for her to take it. Zap. Oh, hello! <laughs> hello! Napita yelps and jumps an impressive four feet into the air. Fair. You were doing a dramatic gesture and forgot to repair her for it. Sorry about that. Where? Huh? This is... Hey... Despite Equius's incredible strength and barely contained excitement, when he wraps the up in glistening, obscenely muscled arms, the embrace is the gentlest you've ever been witness to. Aww, it is- they are- they are kinda cute! They are- this is very cute. I- you know what? You know what? I'm glad. I'm glad that, you know, this is- this is very nice. This is an incredibly unorthodox manner for a pair such as ourselves to become acquainted. I apologize for this gaudy display of public affection. It is extremely unseemly of me. Well, he isn't really in public right now. Actually, the opposite. You're the asshole who popped into his private living space with zero warning. I suppose that's right. This is not the first time you have intruded on my space. Just let yourself in and out. How indecent. Okay, dude. Calm down. You'll get sweaty. I am always sweaty. Equius, you're smashing me! Oh. Equius lets go, but he doesn't step away. He is looking at Nipita like he can't quite believe she's real. Are you real? I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Last time I checked, I think I'm real. I don't know how I got here. Don't worry about it. Just think of it as a reward for being such a good kitty. Wow, that was a weird thing to say. Is that a weird thing to say? That was pretty- that was a little weird, I'll be honest. You'll take it back. But Nepeta doesn't appear to have noticed you fumbling. She scampers around Equus in increasingly excited circles. You can't take the- you can't- maybe you can't fix these kids' lives. Maybe you can't improve society. But when it really comes down to it, you'll have the power to bring friends together. And damn. You'll take it. Victory! Yeah, that's so cute. Aww, I love these guys. They're so good. Those two are probably my favorite pairing. Just, just friends. Like, honest to god, friends. That's great. I love that. Holy shit! Wait a minute. I'm looking at the time. It's just a little under twenty minutes for this entire recording. Holy shit, this is the fastest I've ever done a pester quest recording. Bro, you know what? You know what I should be getting? A like and a comment and maybe even a subscribe if y'all enjoy it. You know I had to do the outro at some point. But anyways, that was very fun. That was very cute. And I'm so glad I didn't get any fucking wrongs there. Because goddamn the pizza is so cute. Just a really, really good character. And it's a damn shame that she wasn't, you know intertwined more in the story in the original Homestuck. But, anyways, that's enough rambling out of me. Y'all got stuff to do, no doubt. So do I, editing this. So, um, yeah. Have a good day. Night. Evening. Twilight. Whatever. I'll see y'all on the flip side. Peace out.